Happy prototyping everyone! The project for this video is a world clock build. First of all, we need a ladder mask. Therefore, we build a world clock generator to generate the mask automatically. So everyone can easily make their own personal mask. And we don't need to write the lookup tables manually. To automatically generate a ladder mask, we first need a way to convert time to text. That should be flexible enough to work with other languages as well. Additionally, special cases should be includable. I decided to use two tables to enter minutes and hours. And the automatically generated main table is also editable. When writing a program, I try to test as much as possible during the development. Therefore, I can eliminate a lot of problems and bugs right away. When you have a bigger and more complex program, that is recommended to also write test code. When you later change something, this will help a lot not to run into new bugs. In my case, I did not structure the code in a way to make it testable. But this is okay for a small program. In the next step, we convert the time text into a graph so that each word is represented as a node. This helps a lot to keep track over the dependence between words in a sentence. The graph is then visualized by the Chunk framework. First, I use an undirected graph, but this turned out to be not a good representation. Later, we want to use the information of the graph to put the words into the letter matrix of the mask. But it is important that every word order of every sentence is respected. Therefore, a directed graph is much more useful to keep track of the word order in a sentence. Additionally, we can merge nodes and reduce the number of words we have to add to our matrix. The node merge is quite challenging. First, we should not match nodes that create a cycle in the graph. A cycle means that two words indirectly depend on each other and we're not allowed to use neither of them. Next, we can also merge subwords like 4 and 14. But in the end, we should get a graph with as less nodes as possible. I think this problem in general is NP hard. So I tried to implement an heuristic. The heuristic is based on Brad first church and tries to merge nodes in the same distance level first. Additionally, it tries to merge nodes first that will introduce less new edges after the merge. This turned out to work good for the most examples and nearly never merge minutes and hour nodes together. To test this kind of complex algorithm, it is good to prepare a lot of different datasets. Especially edge cases are really useful to find problems and bugs. But in general, heuristics are hard to test automatically, because it's hard to determine the optimization level. The next problem on the way to our finished mask is to use the optimized graph to generate our letter matrix. This problem looks a lot like the knapsack problem and is in general also NP-hard. So we again need a heuristic to solve this efficiently. At first I try to generate a list of all possible combination of word orders and then use that for the matrix generation. But there I already got an exponential blow up so it would take too much time to use this. Therefore, it is necessary to combine the two tasks. The final implementation tries to map all three nodes, which do not depend on any other node, into the matrix. If there are more than one node that can be mapped, a random generator chooses one. If all nodes can be added, the process is repeated up to thousand times. This increases the possibility to choose a combination that will fit in a given matrix, but also is not too computational intensive 
and don't take a long time to compute. I think there are a lot of possibilities to optimize my algorithm. First, there should be a bigger focus on words that overlap each other, like two and one, which share a common letter. This can save a lot of space in some cases and make the result matrix smaller. Additionally, unused spaces should be treated more negatively. But it is possible that in the end, for example, just one word is left and therefore a lot of spaces will be left unused. Some heuristics just generate one solution and then try to optimize them. But in this case, it is very complex because two words cannot be swapped easily without recalculating all dependencies. So it will be trapped in a local minimum very easily. So therefore the random approach is not so bad in the most cases and can produce good solutions. Next, I programmed the possibility to visualize the results. This is important to get a better idea how it will look like. You can also choose the fill letters for unused spaces. The spaces are randomly distributed over each line. I also added the possibility to select the time and see which words will be highlighted. This also was very useful for debugging because I could see very fast if something went wrong. In the last step, we need to generate our lookup tables. These tables are later used to program the microcontroller to control the LEDs for each letter. A lot of people use Arduino controllers for this task, especially the Arduino powered by an Atmega 328 because they are less expensive. This microcontroller has only 2K of RAM and 32K of flash storage. Therefore, our tables should be as small as possible. So I decided to generate the tables in three steps. The first tables contain the information for which word which LED have to be activated. The second table contain for each different time text which words are used, and the last table tells which time text is used for each possible time. Additionally, all tables are saved in flash storage. In an optimal case, this only takes about 10% of the total flash storage of the Atmega 328. I also added a short function to read the data from the flash to make it easier to use. I published the finished program on GitHub. I will post the link below. If someone will add some functionality or optimize my algorithm, feel free to fork the project. I will try to add the changes back to my repository. In the end, it took me around 20 hours to program the world clock generator. But now finally back to the actual project, the world clock build. In the first step, we use now our finished program to generate our mask. There we get the tables we use later and the final text for our mask. Then we use Inkshape to convert the text into vectors. These vectors are then converted into G codes to control the laser engraver. After cutting and preparing the material for our word clock, we can stick the black foil into the laser engraver and start the engraving process. To control the laser, I use the CNC G-code controller, a program I developed myself. I also mounted a camera inside the laser, so we can see what's going on during the cutting process. I planned to remove the cutted letters, but in the end I decided that it will look better if I don't. In the next step, we must find a way to mount our LEDs. I decided to just drill holes into my styrofoam and after that use a 45 degree drill to make them bigger. For the LEDs I use WS2812 because they can be controlled over just one IO pin. On Banggood's you can buy little boards with one LED for around 15 cents. It's much more work to solder them together than using LED strips but you have the freedom to choose any distance you want. 
First, I soldered only two lines of the whole matrix. It is every time a good idea to test the outcome before finishing everything when possible. If not, there is a big risk that everything has to be redone. After checking and confirming everything looks good, I continue to solder the rest of the matrix. I use a silver plated copper wire because it's very easy to solder. The WS2812 boards I use have four pins, two are supply, one data in and one data out pin. The data pins are aligned horizontal. So I just use one wire and make short circuits between every data in and data out pin. Then I remove the short circuits with my side cutter. This saves a lot of time. After finishing and testing, I found out that one LED was not working, so I had to resolder it. After altering the mapping table to respect our snake-like wiring, we can use the automatic generated tables to make the first test with our mask. There I realized I had a bug in the export code of the word clock generator. But after fixing it, the result looks really good. To control the LEDs in the end, I decided to use an ESP8266. It is cheap and can receive the time over Wi-Fi. So in the next step, we design a board to mount the ESP8266 and also add a voltage regulator to convert the 5 volts from the USB to the 3.3 volts for the ESP. To generate the G-codes for my little CNC mill, I use PCB G-code converter. To send the G-code to my mill, I again used the CNC G-code controller. I also used for the laser before. First, we make a height map to later correct the G-code automatically. Then, we start the isolation milling. First, with a 30 degree bit and then with a 90 degree bit. In the end, we make all the drill holes for each diameter. This process is quite stable and delivers good results in the most cases. I love my modified Proxum mill. In the next step, we solder all parts together and start the software development for the ESP. I just started using the ESPs for my project recently, so I don't have so much experience with them. But it's incredible how easy it can be programmed with the Arduino ID. Thanks to the big open source community. I try to update the LEDs periodically over a ticker event, but my ASB did not like that and keeps resetting all the time. Then I was reading that it, this can happen if you make the interrupt function too long, so I tried to come up with another solution. I was looking at examples, there I noticed that my ASB also did reset sometimes. I checked the board for problems, but I did not find any. Before I finally gave up, I replaced the ESP with another one. The resets was gone and everything worked out without a problem. Even the long interrupt function did not make any problems after that. It looks like that sometimes the flash memory chip of the ESP can be faulty. In this case it took me a long time and I nearly gave up before I understand what's going on. This is especially a big problem when using new technology. So it's good to plan some extra time for that in your projects. There is normally a lot of help online, but in this special case it was hard to find something useful, because a reset can have so many different causes. The ESP community even provides an example how to request a time over the network time protocol. The only challenge was to convert the UTC time to my local time in Austria. Also, the fast LED library is compatible with the ESP8266. I decided to use a simple rainbow color effect to show the full capability of the WS2812. Later, it should be not a big problem to set the color effects over a web interface. So in the end it was really easy to get all parts working for the word clock software. In the last step we put everything together. The electronics can be beautifully fitted into the styrofoam. And after gluing the two styrofoam plates together, the word clock is finished. I'm really happy with the result.